Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who wants her friends to go from couple to thruple with her. <laughs> <laughs> I had two. I don't know why I'm like five years old and that makes it's me so laugh. Funny. Uh, I had two written out and one was more serious and I chose to go with the chaotic one because that's just the season that we're yeah. in today. Yes. There we go. Oh my God. That is, that leads us so well into today's check-in topic. But first. I just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. No, we're not. We're not professionals. We're not trained in this. And we have the sense of humor of... And we have the emotional maturity of 12-year-olds, apparently. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right. So today's check-in topic, Sam hinted at it a little bit. Um, it's just sort of like an icebreaker question um, that I stole from... Uh, a TA that I hire for my online poetry classes. Um, Tristan always asks our students at the very beginning of our class, like, what is, what season of life are you in right now? And you have to say one or one or two words to describe the season of life you're in. Um, and I always love this check in topic. I always love the creativity that people use to answer it and the insight that you get from their answers. Um, and I also thought it would be kind of good to do a check-in topic about our life or, or our personal <laughs> seasons of life right now um, in lieu of, yes, in lieu of actual tangible relationship advice. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll get to that more later. Um, I just thought this was a good change up. Um, so Samuel, what... It, what season of life are you in right now? I think the word that I would use is turtling. <laughs> t- t- <laughs> turtling. Yeah, absolutely. You caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> Good. Uh, Never in a billion years would I have guessed that word right there. I'm ready. Okay, tell me what the fuck turtling means. Yeah, uh, it feels like I'm kind of going into my shell a little bit mm. like i'm pulling away from stuff wow. yeah um you know in a good way bad way both way i think in a not great way <laughs> like in a fine way you know i think um as an enneagram type five you know i have a fear of overwhelm right i have a fear that like people are going to ask for too much of me um and so i think part of it is like I'm sort of withdrawing because I, that's kind of like my baseline, right? Like that if, if I'm at my most comfortable and if I'm at my least sort of self-aware, that's the general way that I want to be is like to withhold, to like pull back. Uh, and I think just like in this moment of my life, uh, I am working from home a lot and I, uh, you know, need to like intentionally f- push myself to leave the house, which is like really easy because I don't have to because I work from home. <laughs> right. And and also like the place that I currently work, like we don't interact with each other a lot. Like it's not like, oh, I'm in meetings with people multiple times a day. It's like I could go a whole day without literally talking to another person besides Peter. Uh, and so it's like that's kind of like I'm noticing that trend of my own predisposition to want to pull back and knowing that when I'm in places where I'm like by myself for lots of periods of time, that's like the thing that I do. Like, it's hard for me to shake out. I have to push yes. myself to like, to like interact put and that little neck out there. Yeah, again. Absolutely. Yep. I mm-hmm. have to remember that I need to, I need to intentionally spend time with other people. Cause that's not my, that's not my go-to, right? Like it, if, if I don't push myself to do it, then I will just not do it because that's that's the the way that I am most comfortable, I guess, or like my most my most well worn pattern. Let's call it that. So I'm in this like turtling moment, um, and I'm noticing that it's happening. I don't know that I'm doing anything about it <laughs> quite yet, uh, mm, but I, I think, think noticing <laughs> it is a very good first step. Yeah, absolutely. I have I have noticed that it's happening, and now need to figure out. Okay, what do we need to do to help do this less? 
Yeah, yeah. That is such like a beautiful poetic answer. <laughs> Good job. Why, what's You've the, made it into my poetry class. What's your season? Mine is be? not poetic. Okay. Just gonna be like, but which is funny though it's because the like of the hot. Ones... <laughs> it's just I'm hot yeah. all the time. <laughs> That is so funny because the, the answer I do give in poetry class is like, I'm in the season of transition or I'm in the season of the phoenix or oh, whatever. Love that. Um, no, I don't know. But right now I'm in the season of forced efficiency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I am just, I am, lots of things are converging in my life, um, work and personal life are getting amped up in particular ways and my free time is limited and my work time is limited and I have to, I'm I have to really strategize about all of my time and it's the reason why I chose this as my season is because it's it's teaching me so much it's teaching me so much about the systems in my life it's teaching me about my priorities and what I think are my priorities but really aren't or whatever um because when you have to when you have to schedule your free time and you schedule your family time and you schedule your work time it starts your prior your true priorities like the capital T true priorities start to rise to the surface and the faux priorities like rewatching a TV show that you really love but you've already seen sure <laughs> or you know that's a dumb example but like you know there's others. Uh, <laughs> the, the faux priorities fall to the wayside, you know. Um, and it's been teaching me a lot about myself and about um, how uh, how strong I am and how capable I am, and also um, how how hard it is to do everything that life asks us to do, you know. Um, and this is not I'm, I'm I'm like I'm like ramping up to the busy time. This is it's not even busy yet. It's just normal. <laughs> I'm just like preparing for it. So, um, yeah, that is the season of my life. Also, like time is moving so fast. Um, and that's the other you know, that's the other thing that you are shown when you st when you have limited time is how fast it goes by um, and how you have to. You have to put action behind intentions to get things done. And this sounds very like logistical and some of it is, but it's also emotional. You know, my daughter's growing so fast and changing so fast and she needs us in such a different way this summer. Um, really realizing that this will be, you know, she'll be obsessed with me for a couple more years, you know, as a toddler. But then in a handful of summers from now, she's not going to want to play with me the way she <laughs> desperately needs to play with me right now. That's real. That's real. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, like, you know, forced, forced intention and, and forced efficiency, but in a good way yeah. and also an intimidating way. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. It is so, like... There's definitely, it seems like we're on kind of like opposite sides of the coin in yes. this, right? Where it's like, I've got this like masses of free alone time and I'm like not doing anything yeah, with you it. Need connection. <laughs> yeah, yes. and I'm like, no, I need more. I need more stuff. I need yes. to be busier or else I'm just yes. going to like sit here and like live in my little hermit shell for forever. And you're like. And I think this is true a lot of the time where it's like when you have limited time, you're like, how do I make the most of this? Right. And it's and you can kind of sometimes lose sight of like, well, sometimes it's OK to just watch rewatch a show, you know, like that can be really helpful. Um, yeah. And, like, and, and when you were describing turtling, I was like, I actually feel like I'm doing that because I feel like I'm pulling away from life to just get the things I need to get done, you know. Um, it's just in a different way. So. Another reason why I love this question, and, you know, this is because there's always going to be a poet in me. Um, I love the idea of seasonality and to, to, to name with such an economy of words, like in one or two words, the season of your life um, reminds you, it makes you, it makes you realize what's standing out in your heart or your head or your body or whatever. It makes you pick that thing that you're. Um, maybe that you haven't fully articulated to yourself, but it also using the word season reminds you like this is just a time in your year or your 
or your life or your month or or whatever and that all like everything in nature this too will shift and change and turn into something else and recycle itself and um that's what I'm telling myself right now is that this season of my life is just a season. Um, and I love that. And it, it brings me some levity. So I hope that helps other people. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And sometimes it, like, again, extending the metaphor, like seasons are necessary. Like seasons are like you were saying before, like, I'm not really doing anything about this except for noticing it. And I think like noticing is really it's It's the right first step. Like you have to like shake off the old, uh, leaves before you grew new, grow new ones or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is our check-in topic for the day. Love it. <laughs> Are you ready to dive into today's letter? Let's do it. So today's letter is from Yearning Gal, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing to us from Anxiety Land. You must you must vacation there, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Tons of roller coasters. <laughs> tons of the tons of the spinny rides. Yeah, you know, absolutely. the ones that don't go up and down and they just spin in a circle. For sure. Or just um, like laying there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Incapable you know of moving. <laughs> fair trip the the fair ride where they just spin you so fast that your body's like pressed up against the wall. Yeah, that's what exactly. anxiety is like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I can't move. <laughs> Okay, anyway, hello, Sam and Sierra. I've had a crush on two of my friends who are in a relationship with one another for over two years. I, 25, she, her, have been friends with a close friend of mine. Let's call her Morgan since 2022. Ever since seeing Morgan at a new worker's orientation, I developed a crush on her. I thought she was not only cute upon first meeting her, but also funny and introspective from the get-go. As we worked together, I admired her, though, later came to find out through the ever so casual workplace in between work discussions that she had a boyfriend. Let's call him Theo. I was a little let down at the news, but let it go. One night after work, Theo came with Morgan, me and some other coworkers to a bar crawl. Upon meeting him and getting to talk with him, I developed a crush on him as well. Ever since then, the three of us together, but also individually, have had strong friendships. However, as time went on, there seemed to continue to be a flirtatious vibe between us. Sometimes it would be small and sweet gestures that I would, of course, overthink into oblivion, i.e. spontaneously buying me coffees while including a sweet note on the top of the lid or receiving frequent individual texts. But other times it was big gestures, physical touch oriented. Sometimes some examples that come to mind are last Halloween when I ended up drunkenly cuddling with Morgan but while sober, she went on to say that she didn't remember it, as well as other intentional cuddles that were offhandedly mentioned by each of us after the fact. There have also been other times, such as when they were open and I received flirtatious text messages from Theo, although immediately after receiving them, I responded by saying that I felt weird and off sending such messages without Morgan, Morgan's explicit knowledge. For a while, things were swept under the rug. That is until more recently with just the three of us without additional friends hung out and cuddled to the point of me holding hands with each of them. I was anxious to make the first move since we're all introverted, but once I did, it was reciprocated. Mm. Eek. <laughs> <laughs> I feel giggly at that. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just like, oh my God, go for it. I'm into it. Okay, here we go. To be more fully candid, I grew up religious, so pursuing a woman is a new concept to me. Not only that, but I've always been a monogamous person, so the idea of pursuing two people at the same time has been a daunting process that my brain has only even begun to comprehend. For a long time, I pushed down these feelings I was experiencing for Morgan and Theo, but after a recent research of feelings, sponsored by cuddling with all three of us, <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that your feelings are sponsored by yeah. something. <laughs> Um, I can't help but acknowledge that they are there. I'm also realizing that just because I'm ignoring these feelings after all this time doesn't mean they're going anywhere. I feel like I've reached a point where it would be relieving to say my true feelings, but am also considering the risk of our two-year friendship and precious co-workership. If anything went south, it would leave me devastated and entirely embarrassed if there wasn't reciprocity. 
at the same time, I can't help but think that there are feelings occurring by all of us that are more than just friendship to a degree. Thank you for taking the time to read little old me's letter. <laughs> I appreciate any and all advice that you have to give on the further proceedings of this situation. Thank you for your words and advice in advance. You are rock stars. And I know that my single self with new big feelings would greatly benefit from your thoughts. Best yearning. All right, yearning gal. Uh, thank you so much for writing to us and for asking us this question. I think Sierra and I are like weirdly giddy about this letter. <laughs> like we're just like, oh, the excitement of like a, a crush coming to fruition. Um, and oh my God, holding hands for the first time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like not going any farther, but like also having that be a huge step. It literally makes my heart flutter. I know. It's really, it's lovely. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Absolutely. It's been a minute. Yeah. And me remembering that feeling, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, I want that. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I love that. Um, and we also totally see that this is a pickle, right? Because you are uh, facing a lot of things that you haven't done before. Um, including pursuing a woman, including <laughs> women. <laughs> yeah, right. Like pursuing. <laughs> Sorry, that was a dumb joke. <laughs> pursuing a couple. And I don't know that for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, um, and even the idea of you know um, the ways in which acting on a crush with a friend is hard because you don't know what's going to happen and it could change the friendship. And acting on two crushes with two friends at the same time feels like it doesn't just double it. It like quadruples the anxiety around it. So we're going to get into some thoughts and some advice about how you might approach this situation. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. All right, my darling, I adore this letter. Um, I adore the, the what's happening here. Um, and I just want to affirm a couple things. Number one, it sounds like they like you. They like you as a friend. They like you in a flirty way. I don't know the parameters of that like, but you're not like misconstruing this. And we can get into that more. But the second thing I want to say is... It makes a lot of sense to me that you don't know how to proceed here. Like, I don't think you're failing and any sort of like cool person test here <laughs> by by proceeding with a little bit of overthinking, proceeding with caution, proceeding with uncertainty because of a, many reasons. Number one, we live in an assumed monogamous culture where all we see are examples of monogamy and heteronormativity to boot, you know. And so your sort of your your desires are manifesting a path that you have not really seen played out a lot in your life. I'm assuming I don't know what like your friend groups look like. Um, so it makes sense. Like things that are new seem a little uncertain to us. Like we don't know the shape of them. We don't know the feeling of them. We don't know how to have those conversations if we've never had those conversations modeled for us. So this makes sense. But number three, I want to say that this is very common and normal. And this is a part of the human manifestation of desire and connection, right? Like we are heteronormative monogamous culture loves to be like, there's only one for us. There's only one person and anything that falls outside of the, the, the holy grail of heteronormative monogamous sex and coupling is abnormal. But we know, we know from history, we know from sociology, we know from our own lived experience that the human, you know, human desire and sexuality and connections have manifested in a bajillion different ways over the course of human history. This is not new. There's nothing progressive about this because it's literally just humans being humans <laughs> like you're you find two people that you find attractive and they're in a couple they're in a partnership and they seem to find you attractive too the math is mathing for me or whatever <laughs> the young people are yes. saying <laughs> two plus one equals three so, yeah yeah and probably potentially a good time yeah. who knows sometimes Sometimes very awkward, um, <laughs> but I just want to affirm all of that. Like you're nothing's abnormal here, not just in your desires, but in your awkwardness. Your awkwardness makes sense to me because it's new and new things feel new until they're not. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think, I think some of the fear that you have here around, you know, like, oh, if they say no and I, or I misinterpreted, you know, I would be devastated or like, that would be so embarrassing for me. And I totally understand that that is really real, right? It, I can totally understand why you would be embarrassed if you were, if they were like, oh, actually those notes on those coffees were just little friendly notes for you. They, they didn't mean anything like it, like totally get that you would feel embarrassed about it. And also I know that you are capable of navigating through embarrassment, right? And I also know that these two wonderful, lovely people who are your friends and who seem to really appreciate and want to be around you are also going to be willing to navigate that embarrassment with you, right? You don't like... Here, the thing that oh I always God, think- that is such a <laughs> profound and simple thing to point out. I think that's so beautiful. Absolutely. You're right. Like <clears throat> well, because we it's can like, navigate this together. Yeah, absolutely. Cause I, you know, I think about this. This is what I have to tell myself all the time when I'm embarrassed, is that like re- embarrassment requires someone else thinking badly of you, right? Like, oh, I'm embarrassed because like, uh, what if that what is that person gonna think about me? And sometimes I have to remind myself of the fact that like the things that I am often most embarrassed about are things that other people aren't even thinking about or things that people have deep compassion for or empathy for or a deep understanding of. And like it doesn't impact their view of me in any way. And so like this embarrassment that I'm feeling is like me projecting my own stuff onto other people and saying like, oh, my God, that person must think this way about me. And the reality is, is that I don't know, right? I don't know what they're thinking unless they're like explicitly telling me you're an idiot, in which case I would be like, why are you doing that? That's mean. Uh, <laughs> I would be like, you, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, get away from me. What are you doing? So I think, like I said, I think that you all are really capable of figuring this sort of what might turn into a hiccup in your relationship in a, in a meaningful and compassionate and caring way for yourselves and for each other. And personally, I think it's worth the risk. <laughs> I think I love this idea. I love you going to them and saying like, hey, I have a crush on you. And they're like, oh, my God, we both have crushes on you, too. And hot, then hot, hot. and then you kiss each other all at the same time. Like, I think that sounds like fun. <laughs> Or maybe like one at a time. Like, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> However you want to do it is fine. You know, as long as everyone's consenting. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we're going to give you what we so often lack in our world, which is like an example of how do you approach a couple. Caveat, I don't think I have. Oh, no, I have done this. <laughs> what? <laughs> how have you never told me about this? It was so long ago. Okay. It was so long ago. What are the deets? (laughs) Who's this person? Do I know them? (laughs) No, it's it's like, it's pre-Minnesota. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's less exciting, but that's fine. (laughs) It was chaotic. (laughs) Uh, And it was fine. (laughs) I don't, yeah. I, they... There's nothing to share. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, there are details that I will share with you specifically, but like there's nothing there's nothing good to bring to the podcast other than I probably regret it. But at this point in my life, it was like 25. Wait, how am I? It's like, like, were you oh 10? My, oh, my God. No. Oh my God, I was almost like, how old am I? Yeah, it was like 20 years ago. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> For a second, I was like, it was 30 years ago. And then I was like, that is too young, Sierra. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you were eight years old. I was eight. <laughs> Cute. And you went up to the playground uh, to the two kids that were. And I was like, hey, you want to play in that sandbox with me? And they were like, yes. And you're like, you missed, understood, <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Sierra. And in your little head, um, you're like, great. Now we are married. <laughs> we are in love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, so this is all to say I've never in a way that I feel is valuable to society uh-huh. <laughs> like, approach to <a> couple. <laughs> um, uh, so let's practice a script. What does it sound like? The first question is, do you approach one of them or do you approach both of them? I think you, if I were doing it, like, do you approach the closer one? I would approach both or, of like, them if, at the same time. And I would yeah, say to I them, I would too. Hey friends, here's what's going on. 
I want to be transparent with both of you, right? I have, hey, pals. Yeah, I have feelings for both of you. I've noticed some flirtation happening here. I know that you two are like open in your relationship in ways that maybe I don't but understand. are they because, because they said when they were open in the letter. Yeah. That's the uh-huh. other thing is like, yeah. but the, the cuddling. Yeah, no. So like maybe it's like, it's I, I know that. It's at least worth <laughs> talking about. Yes. That's what it is, you know. I know that at yeah, one yeah. point in your relationship, you were open. And like, I'm interested in pursuing a relationship or something with both of you. Yeah. Right. That's the other thing you got to figure out. Do you want a relationship? Do you want a physical encounter? Do you want, do you, are you just trying to see where this is going? And I also want to say it's warranted to just like, um, talk about it in your friendship, you know, like it's, it's, you're not going to break a magic spell, um, or ruin things by being like, Hey, so I'm noticing this pattern in our relationship. Particularly, you could say, I'm noticing, you know, hey, I wanted to talk about how we all cuddled the other day and held hands. And I just wanted to say I really liked it because I like you both so much as friends. And I also have a crush on both of you that I've had for so many years. I really like you both so much. Um, I wanted to talk about holding hands with you and because I kind of feel like you might reciprocate those feelings, but I wanted to just get it out there because we're friends and I trust you to explore these feelings or whatever you want to say. Yeah, absolutely. And then I would, I would give them time to talk amongst themselves about it. Right. So like, be like, you don't need to, I would say like, I'm telling you this right now, but I also want to respect you and your relationship. So like you two talk with each other about whether or not this is something that you would want to pursue. Uh, And I will, I'll kind of wait for you to, to let me know how you both are feeling. And I wanted to come to you together because I love and respect both of you. And I also didn't want it to feel like I was like going behind anyone's back. So like just trying to get this all out in the open and I will, I will understand, you know, whatever decision you all come to about how, we want to move forward together and no matter what, I still want to be your friends, right? Like I still want to pursue our, our friendship because it's really meaningful for me. Um, that's how I would do it. Uh, again, because I don't want it to feel like anyone's like lying or like sneaking, you know, like I would want it to be as upfront as possible with both of them, especially if you're, if you are interested in pursuing relationships with both of them at the same time. Yeah. You know, the only, I agree, and I think I would go this path if I was emotionally mature enough. (laughs) (laughs) The only, the only thing I would say is like, I think there is a warranted time in which you approach the one that you're closest to, or I don't know, feel the most comfortable with it to say like, hey, can, I wanted to talk about this with you two. Can you let them know, like can you bring this to them and then we could have a conversation all together? Do you know what I mean? To like, I don't know. Never mind. Not a good idea. (laughs) I I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I think it could go fine for sure. If we just have different approaches to it. Um, Yeah. But I think like when Um, it comes to navigating relationships with more than one person, right? Like, and also this is true in couples too, but like communication, transparency, like all of that has to be in place and, and like really like healthy, <laughs> you know, like because there's so many ways in which this in relationship, being in relationship with two separate people, right? Like where that kind of stuff can get really fraught. And so I want to make sure that you are developing the muscles to be able to have these types of uncomfortable conversations with one or both of them in a meaningful way, because like the, where these types of relationships, at least in my experiences, have like come to places where it like things aren't working is because like one of the people feels like things are moving too fast without them or their partner is is doing things that they didn't agree to or like people are sort of like triangulating and it feels like they're being left out or like other people are talking. The other two are talking about them without them knowing. Right. Like that's where the like the crunchiness starts to come in. And so I'm sort of pushing you to think about what does it look like for you all, the three of you sort of respecting the fact that they kind of have this, like this 
already established relationship and so like need to consensually agree as a couple to what they want to do and within the boundaries of their relationship that like we're kind of respecting and holding that truth in the discomfort of the fact that like we may all have to three of us have an uncomfortable conversation together I, that's perfect and honestly that's a great place to end it because we are really excited for you you know we the the next step is the unknown the next step is those uncomfortable conversations um because it's it's worth speaking what even if even if they don't reciprocate or even if this this results in uh an uncomfortable giggling conversation that doesn't turn into um a relationship or a you know a physical relationship or whatever you know it's worth voicing because like you said in your letter it, your feelings haven't just gone away. They've stuck around. They've built, these are real friendships and they're real feelings and real desires. And unless you have, dis, unless you decide you would rather swallow them, which is okay too, because sometimes we have to do that. Um, I think the next step is inviting them in on this, this internal conversation that you're having with yourself. For sure. Absolutely. All right, my love. Thank you so much for writing to us. We hope this goes well. Uh, and if it doesn't go well, we know that you are capable of navigating that as well. Um, because we are all of us capable of doing difficult things. So shoot your shot with these folks and uh, let us know how that conversation goes and, and whether or not you're all going to kiss each other on the mouth at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We want to know. We love you. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you so much. We love you. Uh, we hope this helps. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us or if you would like access to our monthly office hours, you can support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you get an additional bonus weekly episode as well as access to all of those office hours. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. You can slide into our DMs, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcast and his music. And remember, sometimes you just got to shoot your shot and lean into that discomfort because discomfort is where new things happen. And guess what? Those feelings might not go away until you do something new. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>